Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Patrick and I'm going to be talking with you today about how we can add lights to our node materials. Uh, it, with every shader, uh, taking light into account is super important to do. Uh, and so I wanna take you through that process in our node material editor so that you can kind of see how we build those together. Uh, so let's jump right in here. Let's go over to uh, our node material editor and the easiest way to get there is to go to enemy.babylonjs.com. Uh, and you can see we've loaded up our node, ed node editor here. Um, uh, it was defaulted on our shader ball because that was what I used the last time I was here. Uh, but when we're working with lights, I would say that that's probably the best of the meshes to use because it has a lot of angles, has rounds. Uh, you can kind of see how light is playing across the surface. Uh, you could use a sphere or a cube or a cylinder if you wanted to. Um, but I find if we're working with lighting, it's much easier to have a more complex mesh with a lot of uh, undercuts. So we're going to keep that. Um, we're going to be working with a fragment output here. Um, and you can tell it just has a color 4 attached to it right now. Um, we've got a couple of lights down here. We've got two directional lights and a hemispheric light that we can turn on and off. But you can see as I turn these on and off, there's no change because we are not calculating the light at all. Uh, we're just applying a color 4 to it. So that's why you have a very flat mesh. Um, so the easiest way to, to get lights in uh, is just by dragging in our light node. And what I'm going to do is uh, you could either uh, type into the filter the node that you want if you know the name of the node. But today I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually use the list so that we can get used to where nodes live and what nodes are available. So uh, to bring in our light node, that would be a scene node. So we're going to drop all the way down here to scene and drag in light. OK, so light has a bunch of inputs. Uh, and we'll go through them one at a time. Uh, let me get color four out of the way. Let me zoom out just slightly so that we have a little bit more room. And then uh, let's start going through them top to bottom. So the first one that we need is a world position. Now, luckily, the vertex output already has a world position in it. So we're just going to grab that. Uh, so we can take the output from world position connect it right down to the world position on lights, and that is taken care of. Now, the next one that we need is the world normal. So that is a, that is a mesh node. Uh, so it will be under mesh. So let's go up here to mesh, and you can see world normals right here. Now, one of the nice things that we did, and, and you notice when lights came in, is anytime we need uh, a node connected that we know we need connected, uh, we will bring it along if it's not already in the, in the scene. So with lights, camera position was auto-populated for you and auto-connected because we need camera position. It wasn't already in our node tree. Uh, with our uh, world normal, when I bring that in, you'll notice it needs mesh normal and the world matrix. And this is a transform node. So what it did is it brought along the mesh normal so that you already had that wired up. But since there was already a world matrix in our node graph, uh, we just automatically wired it for you. So you'll notice there's a, a few automated processes that happen, uh, and that's just to make things easier on you as you're building your nodes. So uh, we'll wire up the world normal. And then uh, the last four, glossiness, gloss power, diffuse color, and specular color, those are material specific. And uh, when we designed uh, node material, we, de we decided early on that we were going to make sure that uh, the first thing that we could represent was the standard material in Babylon. Now, the standard material in Babylon is a Blin Fong spec gloss model. Uh, we do have plans on expanding node material to also use um, PBR, physically based rendering materials, uh, but that is going to be V2. So uh, to launch for V1, uh, we are targeting just the Babylon standard materials, which is spec gloss. And so that just want to keep wanted you to keep that in mind so that when you see spec and gloss, you're not thinking uh, PBR spec gloss. This is Blinfong spec gloss. Uh, so then um, those last four are all very easy to wire. And so we could do one of two things. We could either come up here to inputs, and then uh, we know we need two floats and two colors. Uh, we could drag them in one at a time, or we can use the shortcut that we have, which is click on the input and then drag backwards. And since we know it's a float, we will drop a float node in for you. So that saves you a little bit of time in scrolling back and forth. Um, and so we'll bring in these two, glossiness and gloss power. And uh, for glossiness, that is how 
broad or tight the, the specular reflection on the object is. So for uh, it's a scale of 0 to 1. At 0, it's going to be very broad. And at 1, it's going to be very tight. Uh, so we are going to, first of all, name it so we can tell the difference here. So uh, we've got an extra character in there. And so glossiness is uh, a 0 to 1 value, as we mentioned. So uh, I'm going to take advantage of our slider functionality. So if I put 1 in max, then we get this nice slider. And we can slide back and forth. And, and you can see the value changing. We don't have to type in a specific value. So that's kind of fun. Um, the other one is gloss power. Now, gloss power is uh, a constant in our light calculations. And that, that says how tight is the, the specular reflection going to be at its max. Uh, we have a default value of 64. But if you go higher than that, you'll find that you get a much tighter uh, specular highlight at the high end of the glossiness. So uh, it'll feel more reflective. Um, typically, I like to go with about a 512, but it could be you could set anything. And, and you should experiment and see how the, the reflection looks to you and if you need more uh, uh, gloss power in it. So um, let me call this gloss power. And um, I'm going to set a value of 512. Uh, again, you should, you should play with that. Know that 64 is the base. Um, and then the other thing is, this is a, this is a value that we don't want to change. Uh, this is going to be a constant. Um, and so to do that, uh, we just changed around the, the uh, user interface a little bit, because uh, as we build towards release. Uh, we are adding new features and changing some features up. And as we test it out, we were making some changes. And so one of the changes we made is in how we're coloring our nodes so that you can easily see uh, uh, if something is exposed or something is a constant. So since uh, our gloss power is something we're not going to want to change outside of uh, the shader, then I'm going to make it a constant. And the reason I do that is. Um, we only have the ability to have uh, 16 uniforms in our shaders. Uh, and a uniform is anything that changes, any kind of variable that changes. Um, and so I don't want to waste one of our uniforms on something I know is never going to change. So I'm going to change it to a constant. Uh, so if I come up in the properties under type, uh, you see I can now say visible inspector and constant. So I'll say constant. Um, and now you can see it is it is grayed out in the title, meaning that it is a constant, and we don't have to use one of our uniforms on it. Uh, on that same note, for glossiness, uh, we may want to expose that so that you can change it in the inspector. Uh, and that way, uh, you don't have to come back here to the shader to make changes. You can change it right in the inspector. So let's go up to type and change it to visible inspector. And so now that type is green. Um, so now it's, a, it's an easy visual reference to see, is this available in the, in the inspector, or is this a constant? Uh, and for the last two, diffuse color and specular color, we'll just, again, drag these out. And it'll give us a color 3 for these. Um, and we're just going to choose uh, a couple of colors here. Uh, for the first one, we'll name this to be, to be diffuse. And we'll give this kind of a, oh, I don't know. How about a kind of a desaturated blue? Uh, let's go a little darker so that we can see our light on it. OK. And then uh, for specular color, I'm not going to go with complete white. Uh, I'm just going to pull it down a little bit so that it's not complete white. Uh, and that looks good. And we'll name this specular. OK. So now we have the entire light node uh, wired up. Uh, the last thing to do is to get it into the fragment output. So um, we have on the light note, you notice a diffuse output and a specular output. Now you can grab each one of these independently if you want to do something else with them before we send them to the fragment output. Uh, but uh, the easiest way to do this at this point is let's go all the way to the top here to the basic math and grab an add node uh, because our diffuse output is going to be our diffuse color. Uh, multiplied with all of the lighting. And then the specular is the specular reflections on top of it. So we want to add both of those together. And so now, uh, when I take this output and come up to RGB, you can see we've got a bunch of light on our mesh. Um, I turned off one of the, one of the directional lights because our, our specular color is 
uh, pretty high and our glossiness is really low. So you can see how broad this uh, specular highlight is. So if I come back here to our glossiness, and remember we made this a slider, we can kind of slide this up and get it really sharp. Uh, and that shows you like what, what the surface is made of. Is it made of something that's dielectric and, and really rough, or is it something that's shiny or plastic or wet maybe? Um, and so uh, you'll notice that uh, it is going really, really quick uh, between broad and sharp. So one of the other things I like to do when I'm building these shaders is I'm going to add one more part to this glossiness factor. Um, I'm going to add a power node. And power node is underneath uh, our trigonometry here. It should be a power right here. And then um, we are going to bring back a uh, value there and then a power here. And so this one, let's say uh, four, okay. Uh, and then what that's doing is uh, raising our glossiness to a power of four. And then what you'll notice is when I change it, uh, we get a much slower fall off here. So then it gives you a little bit more control over that. Um, so now that's basically all we're going to do. Uh, let's clean up our nodes a little bit here so that we're not completely overlapping each other. And we've got an extra node, which we don't need anymore, which is this color four. So we've cleaned it up a little bit and bring this back down. So we've got everything in line. We know every, where everything is going. Okay, now the best part of this is uh, I've been using the node material editor as a standalone website uh, to build our node material. I haven't been uh, in the playground at all. This is a standalone, uh, but I can reuse this. So um, it's, it can be used for much more than just looking at this preview. Um, I can come up here and hit save. And then once I save it, now I can use that time and time again. Uh, I can either come into a new uh, node material editor and hit load and load it right back in. Um, I can call it in code and assign it to my meshes. Uh, this, is, this is just a great tool for uh, building your, your shader materials really quickly, saving them out, and then using them in your, uh, your full experience layer. So uh, that's all we've got today, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments in the section below, and uh, we will see you next time. Take care.